The Penguins of Madagascar. Happy King Julian Day. The Penguins of Madagascar. Happy King Julian Day by Olivia London. Night had fallen in the New York Zoo, but the souvenir shop was full of animals. Suddenly, King Julian burst into the room. Ta-da! Mort pressed play on the stereo. Loud cheering came out of the speakers, but the animals just stared blankly. In a few hours, we celebrate the biggest holiday of the year, King Julian said. Christmas in July, Marlene shouted. Then she thought for a moment. Except it's not Christmas and it's not July, she realized. Look how they tease me, King Julian joked. I am speaking of King Julian Day. It is on every calendar. King Julian showed them a calendar with his face drawn on it. So start shopping, he said. The animals had no idea what King Julian was talking about. What is King Julian Day, asked Marlene. Everyone gives gifts to the king and does whatever he says, Maurice explained. I see, said Skipper. In that case, pass. With that, he turned to leave the room. The other animals followed Skipper but Maurice shouted for them to wait. You want King Julian to be happy on his holiday, he called. You do not want him to freak on you. We'll take our chances, Skipper replied from the doorway. Please, Mort begged. King Julian Day is my favorite holiday. I love it this much. Mort stretched his arms wide. He was cute, but the animals still weren't sure. Luckily, Maurice had a plan. He lifted a pinata in the air. He had found it at a birthday party at the zoo. Do you know what people put in these things? Asked Maurice. Candy! That got the penguins' attention. Suddenly, everyone was thinking about lollipops and chocolate. This pinata is full of delicious sweets, Maurice said. They can all be yours if you celebrate King Julian Day like you mean it. Candy changed everything. The animals agreed to celebrate King Julian Day. Back in the penguin habitat, Skipper's crew was guessing what was inside the pinata. I bet it's a mix of gummy fish and candy buttons, Kowalski said. We may never know, said Skipper, because tonight we are cleaning. Perhaps we could postpone, Kowalski asked. Negative, Skipper replied. Then he crossed King Julian Day off his calendar. Skipper's right, said Private. Candy is candy. He shook his head. I mean, duty is duty. Private, Kowalski, and Rico thought about all the candy they would not get to eat. They could not help being sad. Kowalski even cried a single tear. Skipper felt bad. Okay, he said. I will clean by myself. You can go. The others could not believe their ears. They would get to eat candy after all. When King Julian Day arrived, King Julian was very excited. Welcome, my loyal royal subjects, he called to the animals. Happy King Julian Day, Marlene shouted. Maurice stood where King Julian could not see him. He held up the pinata to remind the animals of their prize. Then he called out, Everyone, now bask in the glory that is King Julian. The animals ooed and aahed loudly, but not loudly enough for the king. That was weak, King Julian cried, and you know how that makes me feel, Maurice. King Julian was getting angry, so Maurice tried to change the subject. Let's get this party started, he said. Everybody, time to limbo. Yes, cried King Julian, limbo contest. So the animals lined up to limbo. Marlene was the first to go. Her nose almost touched the pole, but she made it. Must have candy, she whispered, reminding herself to stick with it. 
Just as Rico stepped up to the pole, King Julian lowered it a few inches. But Rico coughed up an anchor and spit it out. Then he slipped right under. Finally, all of the animals made it under the pole. Then it was King Julian's turn. The pole was very low. None of the animals could limbo under this pole, except for King Julian. He leaned back very far and walked right under. King Julian wins the limbo contest, Maurice announced. I am not only the king, King Julian replied. I am the limbo king too. Next, we do the traditional King Julian Day tossing of the fruit, Maurice said. Tossing it where exactly, Marlene asked. Just then, King Julian threw a hard, juicy melon. He hit Marlene right in the face. Julian tosses it at you, Maurice replied. At us? No, said Kowalski. But then Mort secretly showed the pinata to the animals. Soon everyone was thinking about gumballs and toffee. They decided to let King Julian toss the fruit. King Julian picked up a giant pineapple. He tossed it at Phil, knocking him to the ground. Mason thought that was funny until he got hit by a giant mango. Next, King Julian hit Private in the face with a huge watermelon. The animals could not wait for the tossing of the fruit to end. After putting up with all of this, they really deserved that candy. Back at the penguin habitat, Skipper was hard at work cleaning. He had just finished wiping the telescope when a piece of fruit flew through the air. It splattered right on the lens. I just cleaned that, he cried. At the party, all the fruit had been tossed. Next is the bake-off, Maurice said. You have one hour to bake the best King Julian Day cake ever. King Julian thought everyone would rush off to bake, but the animals just stood there. Does anyone know how to bake, Marlene asked. The animals all shook their heads. Why are they shaking when they should be baking? King Julian asked angrily. His eyes opened wide and his face got red. Maurice secretly showed the animals the pinata. Once again, the candy did its job. I have always wanted to learn baking, Private said suddenly, and the animals ran off to bake. Kowalski, Private, and Rico went back to the habitat to bake Julian's cake. Their first step was finding a mixing spoon. Luckily, Rico was able to cough one up. Phil and Mason kept monkeying around. Phil put pineapples on his eyes, and Mason smashed the eggs with the rolling pin. Marlene had never stirred so much. She was very tired. Baking a cake was hard work. Then Mort came by with the piñata. The thought of candy woke her up. Finally, it was time to show the cakes to King Julian. Marlene went first. Her cake was made with flies and worms. I am on a low-tick diet, King Julian said. Next. Mason handed King Julian their pineapple cake. It's frosted with brown booger, he said. Then Phil used sign language to say something to Mason. My mistake, I mean brown sugar. Well, just in case. Next, the king said. Finally, the penguins gave him their cake. Death by chocolate, Kowalski said. King Julian licked his lips. The chocolate part sounds good, he said. Actually, we use mud, they told him. Bring it here so that my belly may taste its yumminess, cried Julian. I'll bring it, said Mort. Mort grabbed the cake, but then he tripped. The cake went flying. King Julian got mad, again. I was looking forward to eating my cake, he yelled. Skipper had just finished cleaning fruit off the telescope lens. Then the flying cake landed on his head. Skipper marched over to the king. News flash, he shouted. There is no such thing as King Julian Day. The animals could not believe their ears. They had worked so hard to keep King Julian happy so they could get candy, but now he would get really angry. Maurice lowered his head in his hands. Mort was so upset, he fainted. Everyone just stood there waiting to see what King Julian would do next.
King Julian's eyes opened very wide. He leaned in close to Skipper, who still had the cake on his head. My cake, he cried, it's back. Everyone sighed with relief, especially Maurice. King Julian was so happy to see his cake, he had not heard what Skipper said. Silly penguin, King Julian said, taking the cake off Skipper's head. Have some cake in your head, not on it. Why, I think this was the best King Julian day ever. Then Julian went off to eat his cake. You saved my big old behind, Skipper, Maurice said. And you helped this crew win one big pinata. Candy, candy, they all cheered. They were finally going to eat the gummy fish and candy buttons. But just as they were about to break it open, King Julian came back. What is this? You got me a big paper horse, he asked. Thank you. I will name him Bob. Um, your majesty, that's actually a pinata, Maurice explained. He thought the animals deserved their candy. But King Julian just laughed. A pinata? Why are you making up words, Maurice? Then he hopped on Bob and bounced away. But King Julian bounced right back. Silly King me, I almost forgot the traditional King Julian Day sharing of the sweets, he said. Bob has candy guts, King Julian cried, so dig in. Then he tore a giant hole in the pinata. Candy spilled out of Bob. At last, everyone enjoyed the sweet, yummy treats. It was the best King Julian Day ever. The end.